Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the border has been a problem for a long period of time because Congress has failed to pass comprehensive immigration reform. It's, it's not like this is a new issue. This is something that's been going on for decades here. It's been passed from one president to the next to the next. It, it, is it possibly worse now? Well, that's what happens when you have a problem that you don't fix for, for two decades. Um, you know, the same people who talk about the border, you know, have, it's not like they've come up with solutions. They complain to get on Fox News every day, uh, but it's not like we're having solutions. And so I, I want to ask a couple of questions because I'm frustrated with Homeland as well. I mean, I have, a, I have folks back home who were raped by their nanny. She spent 20 years in jail in Florida. And all the family wanted to know is that when she was released, what was going to happen? That's it. She was a victim. She had a right to know. And I had even on her behalf made connections with Homeland on this issue. We were told, don't worry. We will make sure the family knows if she's deported or if we're keeping her, whatever the story is. Guess what? None of it happened. She, the rapist was deported. Nobody knows what happened to her. She's not flagged in the system. And now that family, the girl, who's now a mother of two, has to be worried about where her rapist is. And so I have a couple of questions, because obviously there's complaints all around, whether it's Secret Service or ICE. You know, Homeland was founded 22 years ago, or 20 years ago, after a national emergency. It's got 22 agencies in it. I'm not going to list them all. They're all household names. Has Homeland become too big? Is it too big? Is it time to split Homeland up? Is it time to reform the, the bureaucracy? Uh, Congressman, let me um, first um, say that uh, you and I did have a discussion about the um, individual who was uh, convicted of rape. Um, and we discussed the Crime Victims' Rights Act, and the prosecutor should have complied with that. I hope that that information was helpful that I supplied to you. Um, well, that's I, a whole other issue, because yes, quite, quite, quite frankly, the rapist had more rights than the victim. Yes, sir. I agree with you. Um, I, I will say that Homeland Security, as the third largest um, department in the federal government, is quite large. Uh, it was put together, um, as you described. Um, You're uh, almost as big as DOD. Um, yes, sir. We're number three right behind DOD and Health and Human Services. It perhaps may require a look by this committee or others, maybe the Committee on Homeland Security, to see um, sort of a look back to see if it's fulfilling the mission that it was intended to do. But that would be a decision for Congress and not for me as the Inspector General. So you don't, you don't have any suggestions on potential reforms or, or opinions on whether you think the agency can still function with 22 agencies. I mean, I hear it's kind of like when all the agencies get together with the secretary, it's like the knights of the round table. They each give five-minute updates to the secretary, and then the meeting's over. I will uh, share that um, from our experience of doing audits and inspections and even criminal investigations, that silos of information remain to this day in DHS, which is presenting a problem uh, for effective management. Yeah, so what I would like to hear is I'd like to hear solutions to problems rather than continuing to gaslight issues at Homeland or an INS or Customs and Border, whatever it is. And I just don't, I don't hear any solutions. And I think it's quite time we start looking at reform at Homeland. I'll yield the balance of my time to, to the ranking member. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kafari. Uh, in April 2022, I want to get back to something. The nonpartisan watchdog project on government oversight, and this was mentioned by another member, broke a disturbing story that your office sought to censor findings of sexual harassment and misconduct at DHS. According to the draft report that, that we've obtained in the committee, 28,000 DHS employees were surveyed, and more than 10,000 of the 28,000 reported experiencing sexual harassment and misconduct in the workplace, yet the report was shelved. Uh, Mr. Kafari, did your report on the morale of CBP, which we've been discussing, consider the effects of sexual harassment on employees? 
I'm sorry, uh, Ranking Member, what, what's the question? Did your report on the morale of CBP or ICE employees consider the effect of sexual harassment and misconduct? I think the answer to that is actually no. And, but would you agree that sexual harassment and misconduct are one factor that could actually impact morale? It could be a factor, certainly. Thank you, and yet it was not considered in that report. And so I just want to make that note. I also, with the remainder of my time, just want to note that, I'll, I'll th thank you, Mr. Chairman, I will, uh, I'll discuss it later.